like uh, good afternoon. I see only two people have logged in today for some reason. So anyway, uh, time is important. At least uh, the people who uh, couldn't join at this moment uh, will have the facility of uh, the recorded video so that they could go through. In the meantime, to fair by the people who are in now, the only two people in, I will start with the input term assignment. And uh, then I will touch the revolving facilities for a little bit of a difficult sum and see how it goes, right? Uh, uh, fish out the input term exercise, input term 2010, that I have given in the handout last time, right? Though I say it's 2010, it's applicable for 2020 as well. The current version of input terms is 2020, right? <clears throat> And if there's a difficulty of understanding, just make a, a comment. Uh, the first question, as per X works, which one is not correct? As per X works, which one is not correct? Under this shipping term, the seller provides the goods for collection by the buyer at the seller's own premises. The buyer arranges insurance against damage to the goods in transit. This term requires the least effort by the seller, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out export formalities. Seller must contract for carrying. So I did tell you the other day, X works the input terms. The seller's responsibility is to Keep the goods in the warehouse or extractory on his own premises as agreed by the seller buyer and notify the buyer. So these goods have to be kept in an exportable manner, in an exportable manner. Exportable manner. When I say exportable manner, it has to be travel worthy packaging. You can't let the goods be perish, right? It has to be in exportable manner. And obligations of the seller in case of exports completes or you say delivery completes delivery. Completes no sooner than these two ingredients are full, uh, fulfilled. These are the two qualifications the seller's obligations are lying on. No sooner than the exporter notifies the buyer after keeping the goods at a agreed place, that is as good as the, the seller has already delivered the goods to the buyer. Right? So that is the only obligation of the seller. Right. Now we look at the uh, question once again. The answer is rather under this shipping term, the seller provides the goods for collection by the buyer at the seller's own provisions. Under this shipping term, the seller provides the goods for collection by the buyer at the seller's own premises. So that is correct. Seller keeps the goods on its own premises. Or an extractory, right, in a warehouse or a godown, as agreed by the buyer. So one is correct. Buyer arranges insurance against damage to the goods in transit. If necessary, buyer can arrange the uh, insurance, the marine insurance, right? There's no compulsion whatsoever to the buyer to uh, to cover the insurance. But if he wants to cover the insurance for himself. He can go ahead with it. What important is the other other way around. Seller is not ought to cover the insurance on behalf of the buyer. Seller has nothing to do with it. Seller, has, seller does sweet nothing. Right? So, insurance is covered. If I cover the insurance, 
I had to cover for myself or I had to cover for somebody else. So, seller is not odd, just no obligatory whatsoever on the part of seller to cover the insurance on behalf of the buyer. So, point two was a right. Buyer on his own, if he has a, if definitely he will face a risk no? from taking the goods to a, to his uh, destiny, destiny point, there will be a risk. So, why does he cover the insurance, right, from the place of undertaking? up to the place of delivery, let him cover on his own. This term requires, third one, this term requires the least effort by the seller, up to that point is right, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out export formalities. And the answer, that particular answer, is a bit of a difficult answer for you to understand plain reading. The seller has the least risk in case of experts and the buyer has the least risk in case of DDP. DDP. Right? Seller has the highest risk for this DDP and the buyer has the highest risk for experts. Right? So, in other words, seller has the least risk in the trade term experts. That is right. But I, I did tell you the other day the exporter, rather the buyer, should come and get the export clearance also done in the unknown country. When you try to figure out the export clearances on the foreign country, there could be issues with regard to documentation, language barriers, right, or bureaucracy, or some kind of a difficulty he might face to get the opportunity. No country will like a foreigner will come and ask for export clearances. So he needs assistance. So when he has a difficulty of getting the export clearances formalities through, then he will request the seller to assist him. In that junction, seller should assist. So apart from this responsibility, there is an ancillary responsibility coming in uh, to the seller. That is to assist on formalities, formalities when acquiring export clearance. Export clearance at the request by the buyer. So the expex expenses on this, where the seller is concerned, buyer has to warn. That's a different thing. But the seller should assist. But if there's a dead dock of the tariff, where the seller asks unable to get the export license, where the buyer is in no way that you could get the export license cleared. And the seller, then the buyer says, okay, I'm not in a position to get the export license, though, just because you have resisted. Therefore, why don't you do the export clearance also as well? In that instance, exports cannot be used. Then they have to compromise to come further, one step further into term for FCA, free carrier. In a free carrier into term, it's almost the same as exports. But the seller has one additional responsibility other than the experts, that is, he has to cover or clear the export clearance. He has to get the export clearance. That is why the answer C, I will read again. This requires the least effort by the seller fine, but should not be used where the buyer cannot carry out export formalities. So, in that case, the buyer will communicate with the seller and say that I am unable to get the export license whatsoever. So therefore, experts will not be work out. Why don't you come for an FCA agreement? Right. Seller must contract for carriage. Seller must contract for carriage. There's no obligation whatsoever in part of seller to contract for carriage. Just a buyer's responsibility. Buyer has to come all the way from his country to the seller's country and get the goods. Uh, from the seller's warehouse, loaded into a carriage, 
and go to the port and arrange the vessel and go to the distinct port and from there take the delivery to a landlocked place. So the whole carriage will be contracted by the buyer, not by the seller. So therefore, answer D is wrong. Answer D is wrong. But the, what the question is, as per experts, which one is not correct? What is not correct or incorrect is D. Right? D. Second mark. Which of the following, if there's uh, any problem of understanding, just uh, make it a point. It's very simple, I think. Which of the following will be a requirement under all different inco terms? Right? Which of the following will be a requirement under all the different inco terms? That is, from XWorks to DDP, just one common ingredient. That's what they're asking. Say the clear regulatory clearance in their country. Right, seller, clear regulatory clearances in their country. It's strong because in case of exports, seller does not clear for export clearance. Seller provides the goods in travel worthy packaging. Well, in exports, when the goods are being kept in a warehouse or an undergo go down or in a warehouse or in an factory, seller has to keep the goods in an exportable manner. The exportable manner means it has to be in travel worthy packaging. That is right. Then seller identify the carrier. In experts, in FCA, in FOB, seller don't identify the carrier. It has to be nominated by the by itself. So third of C is also wrong. Seller decide the date of delivery. Seller doesn't decide date of delivery in case of experts. Buyer has to come and arrange the voyage and determine what the date of delivery is. So therefore. The, what the correct answer is in here is seller provides the goods in travel worthy packaging from XWorks to DDP. Right. Third one, which of the following items will the seller not have the responsibility for cargo insurance? Right? Now, this is easy to understand if you know a little bit of a thumb rule. Out of the level inco terms, there are only two inco terms. What is the seller? to cover the insurance on behalf of the buyer. That is CIP and CIF. That is why this letter I is there. Carriage insurance pay, first insurance pay, cost insurance and freight. Carriage insurance pay, cost insurance and freight. The cost insurance freight could be used only for sea shipments, that is from port to port, port of loading, port of destination. CIP also could be used for sea all right, but when the CIP is used from inland, then up to a destined delivery place. Say for example, if the goods are moving from Colombo to Mumbai, there's only a sea deck, then you can use CIF. You can use CIP also as well. Right? Appropriate will be CIF, but you can use the CIP also as well. But if the goods are moving from Borderless Government to New Delhi, then CIF cannot be used. You can use CIP only. Taking in charge the goods from Borderless Government, then you from Borderless Government to Kalampur Port, there's a land deck. From Kalampur to Mumbai, there's a sea deck. From uh, Mumbai to New Delhi, it could be from Rail, road, or from air. So the CIP or CPT for that matter being used for multimodal transport quotations. But the question is which insurer, which trade terms the seller has to cover insurance, contract for insurance, that is CIP and CIF, right? So we'll look at the question once again. Which of the following items will the seller uh, not have the responsibility for cargo insurance? Which of the following items will the seller not have the responsibility for cargo insurance? Right? So he has the responsibility for CIP. If the question is not have the responsibility, then there are many answers. That is, CFR, he doesn't have the responsibility. Then the DDP, 
a DDP he doesn't have the responsibility and FOB he doesn't have the responsibility only CIP he has the responsibility to cover the insurance up to the place of delivery place of destination in other words so answer for that will be A, B and D fourth one in which term did the seller have to deliver the goods to a carrier carrier identified by buyer identified by buyer i told you fca fob fas <coughs> fca fas fob buyer has to nominate the carrier and the ship right so therefore cfr cif right seller has the right to nominate the carrier or the ship so the answer will be if we term the seller have to deliver the goods the carry identified by buyer then cannot be a then this has to be fob and fca fob and fca ddp seller will have the goods. seller will deliver the goods up to the importer so therefore he will have the uh, what you call the vessel dominated in case of cfr of course his risk will be transferred to the seller no sooner the goods being placed on board the vessel, but not nominated by the buyer. Because there is a contract for carriage up to the port of destination. So answer for that will be B and D. B and D. Bertie David. Right. Question number five. Question number five Export is in Hong Kong and import is in the UK. Right, so we'll take it down. Exporter is in Hong Kong and the importer is in UK. Right. Which of these inco terms could apply? So there are three inco terms being given: CFR, FOB, CIF. Right. And remember, I told you I gave all the input terms, eleven input terms, and I wanted you to insert a particular, that is, uh, delivery place, where the risk getting transferred from seller to buyer. You should be insert as a suffix of the input term, something like this. CIF column. CIF column. Or you can say CIF Singapore. So how do you determine whether it's Kalam or Singapore? That is from the input term itself. Because if you are using CIF or CFR for that matter, CFR or CIF, you have to insert, you have to insert named, named port of destination. Name port of destination. So when you say CIF Colombo, that means the goods are coming to Colombo. But we don't know from where the goods are coming in case of CIF or CFR. <coughs> right? What's the other important being given? FOB. FOB. It's two five phase FA saucer. You have to insert. Named port of not the destination port of shipment. Name port of shipment. 
You will have faith this time. I'm just reminding you, I gave you this as a note. So when you say FOB sing up to, that means goods are being imported from Singapore. Goods are being imported to Colombo. So that means export is in Singapore, import is in Colombo. Right? And the uh, next one is CIF. So CFR and CIF is the same pattern. CFR and CIF is the same pattern. You have to include the port of destination. Port of this, not place of destination, port of destination. But in the case of FOB, FAS, you have to insert the named port of shipment. Right. So with that knowledge, you should be able to figure out what the answer is. But here it says, the starting in this uh, question, it says, Hong Kong, in, uh, export is in Hong Kong. Export is in Hong Kong. Import is in UK. Import is in UK. That's the, the hint that they have given. Right. Now we look at one by one the answers are the multiple choice. CFR Hong Kong. CFR Hong Kong. Next one is FOB London. Third one is CIF London. CIF London. Now we'll uh, look at it one by one. If you are using CFR, if you are using CFR, the Hong Kong should be the port of destination. So therefore, the import has to be in Hong Kong, in other words. But the export is in Hong Kong. So therefore, this option is strong. You can't have, have, can't, cannot have the input term in this manner. You can use CFR, but you have to say, a place other than Hong Kong, but that place also has to be a port. Right? We can say CFR Colombo, CFR Singapore, CFR Frankfurt, right? Like that, CFR Hamburg, like you can see. But you can't say CFR Hong Kong because the export is in Hong Kong. Because you have to insert the insert as a suffix of the incoter named port of destination. So this is not a destined port. But the mode of loading is still. So therefore, that's wrong. FOB London. FOB London. So if you are using FOB, it has to be the name port of shipment. Name port of shipment. So therefore, London guy has to be the expo exporter then. London guy has to be the exporter then. But the export is in Hong Kong. So therefore, this is also wrong. Therefore, it's also wrong. CIF London. When you are using CIF, you have to insert name port of destination. If you are using FOB, it has to be name port of shipment. If you are using CIF, it has to be name port of destination. So name port of destination means London guy has to be the importer. So there is some relationship between UK and London, UK and London there. Yeah. But the U, import is UK. Import is UK. So therefore, if you write CF UK, it's still wrong. Why? UK is not a port of destination. You have to write the port, London. London is in UK, therefore this is right. Or if you write Felix Toe, Felix Toe, CI Felix Toe, that's one of the port in UK again, that's also right. The seaport, right? Understand? 
that's why I said import UK that don't expect the answer to be CIF UK. You can't write CIF UK. You can't write CIF Sri Lanka. It has to be CIF Colombo or you can say CIF Ambantara now. Right. So, still I see only two people have logged in the moment online. So, give me a comment whether you understood up to that point quickly. Only two people are there now. So, I'll go for the sixth question in the meantime. Right. Make a comment. Uh, the two people have logged in. Whether you understood up to that level? That is Nilakshi and Tanya. Just make a comment. In the meantime, I'll go for the question number six. In which of the following would the seller be responsible for nominating the carrier? Right? So seller won't, seller won't nominate a carrier in case of FOB and FCA and FAS. So he will nominate the carrier in case of CFR only according to this question. Right? What is this question? FOB and FCA, he will not nominate. The buyer will have the right of nominating it. And therefore, CFR will be the answer for that. Next one. In which of the following situations would the seller have to claim for goods lost in transit? Right? So, in case of FOB, seller's risk passes to buyer, knows of the goods being placed on both the vessel which is nominated by the buyer. So after that, buyer ca carries the goods on his own nominated vessel up to his point of destination. If something goes wrong during the voyage, seller is no concern of claiming the goods, claiming the damage. Right? That is the buyer's responsibility. In case of CPT, that is carriage paid to, Seller's responsibility or the risk transferred at the point where the goods be taken in charge by the freight operator, freight forward. From, from Kalania, if the goods are moving to Mumbai, from Kalania, he will hand over the freight forwarder. He, the, that freight forwarder will carry the goods up to the port of Kalam. So no, so, no sooner that the goods be uh, given in charge in Kalania, the, the seller's risk passes on to buyer. And from that point onwards, seller has nothing to do with the status of the goods until received by the buyer. So therefore, in CPT, he will not uh, will carry the any kind of a responsibility of claiming for damage for goods. CIF, now that's a bit of a tricky thing. CIF and CIP, CIF and CIP, you can see the letter I in there. Seller has to contract for insurers. But the seller contracts for insurers on behalf of the buyer. So buyer has to claim in case of an eventuality. If loss, good, loss uh, goods or loss, uh, damage goods, loss or damage of the goods, buyer will claim. Seller cannot claim, but seller endangers the insurers. Right? In the case of CIP, seller is just from the place of uh, uh, what you call uh, taking in charge up to the place of delivery. In case of CIF, seller will take the insurers from the port of uh, loading up to the port of destination. Something happens during the voyage to the goods, seller cannot claim, but the buyer can claim. In DDP, seller will not contract for insurance all right. But he will, very likely, he will cover the insurance on his own interest. Why? Because in case of delivery, delivery, delivery duty paid, uh, arrival visa of transport, 
seller has to carry the goods up to the point of importer is he has to clear even for imports in that case right only thing he will not unload the goods he will keep the goods ready for loading so while carrying the goods if something happens during the voyage seller should be able to claim for damages so for that matter he will cover the insurance all right but the, the if he covers the insurance that is for himself not on behalf of the buyer so answer for this will be seven right right if you wish you can make a comment on that uh, i can see two people are logged in here logged in uh, just make a comment if you understood or not just say yes or no it won't take uh, won't won't take that long unless you are in so after that we will proceed on the other other assignment Okay, then now then uh, we'll go for the equal of assignment if that's the case. Uh, the assignment number two, these are based on uh, in the in the exam level. Past papers have slightly modified the questions. A Sri Lankan importer IPLC company is negotiating with an exporter EPLC from Mumbai for the import of a consignment of goods to be freighted to Colombo. Is prepared uh, to deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport cleared for export. What terms of from Inco Terms 2010 could be used for this transaction? Right? We read the question again. A Sri Lanka importer, IPLC company, is negotiating with an exporter, EPLC from Mumbai. So Mumbai is EPLC is the exporter, he is from Mumbai, uh, for import of a consignment of goods to be air freighted to Colombo. So the board of shipment will be by air. He is prepared to deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport, cleared for export. Cleared for export. Right. So what terms from uh, Inco terms 2010 could be used for this transaction? So we'll list out all the level Inco terms and eliminate one by one and see what would be the appropriate Inco term that we can think of in here. Right. Experts. Then uh, a phase free on flight ship, free on board, carriage paid to, carriage and insurance paid, cost and freight, cost and insurance and freight. Delivered place unloaded, that is called the current version, otherwise it's delivered at terminal, it's called the old version. Delivered at place and delivered duty, duty paid. You see the all the terms are there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right. So we'll uh, take in ordinary manner. Experts, 
the seller does not pay for export. But the question says, the last line of the question says, is prepared to deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport cleared for export. Cleared for export. So therefore, this is wrong. Right? This is wrong. So, <clears throat> FCA. FCA, you have to clear the ex clear for export. So this is right. Right, what is FCA? You will clear for export and keep the goods at an agreed place. Right? So why will do the same thing what he did for the export contract other than clearing for export? Then has already done. So very likely the appropriate answer would be FCA, but we'll go for the other one source as well because there could be more than one appropriate eco terms. FAS. FAS, FOB, CFR, and CIF could be used only for sea and Indian waterways. But the question is the freight is by air. It's a air freighted consignment. So therefore, these four input terms that I have underlined cannot be used. So I will say only for C. If for only for my extension purposes, you can uh, write when the exam level if the question being asked in this nature. This input term could be used only for C. Only for C and even waterways. This also like that. CFR also like that. CFR also like that. So we eliminated it. X works, F phase, FOB, CFR, and CIF. Right. So we'll uh, okay, we'll leave out these first uh, two for the moment and we'll try to uh, uh, so see the arrival means these are D group or arrival means of transport where the buyer, buyer uh, where the seller carries the goods up to the buyer's point. In case of the DPU, he has to carry the goods. He will not clear for imports, but he unload the goods and notify the buyer. Unload. That's why it says delivered place unloaded. Goods has to be unloaded. In case of a DAP. He has to go and keep the goods uh, farther away from the place that the earlier, farther away, agreed by the buyer, up to, at the buyer's, uh, uh, buyer's destination. But he will not clear for imports. And the goods will not be unloaded. He will keep the goods ready for unloading. In case of DDP, seller will take the goods up to the buyer's point. He will pass the customs or the meeting, he will clear for imports and go to his uh, desired place and keep the goods ready for unloading. He will not unload it. He will not unload the goods. Only DPU that the seller wants to unload the goods. So these are arrival means. But the question says, seller is not doing those things. Seller will keep the goods at the airport. Here. In the second line, it says, from Mumbai for the import of consignment for goods to be afraid. Colombo is prepared to deliver the goods at Mumbai International Airport. We had five sports. So he will clear the export, pay five sports, and keep the goods in his country at Mumbai International Airport. So obviously, the D, uh, D group will not come. But I'll cut this also. Then we are left out with carriage pay to and carriage and insurance pay, right? Carriage pay to and carriage insurance pay. Now, carriage pay to means the, the what do you call the seller give the goods over land block place. That's not necessarily right. You can use the uh, use from the C itself, but usually CPT and CIP, CPT and CIP used for combined transport. Combined transportation, right? That's a multimodal transport in there. So, from a landlocked place up to a landlocked place, or if there's a land, land, lake, sea, lake, like that, there's a combined combination of transport modes, right? So, the seller 
will uh, what you call uh, taking charge of goods from a place no sooner that he take uh, taken in charge the risk part will go up to the buyer so up to that point is right but in this question it says goods will be delivered only at the mumbai national airport so in cip and c i uh, cip and cpt there's a contract of carriage that the seller has to take place up to the place of delivery or place of destination in correct terms so that point is not there here the goods be just kept in the mumbai airport on that grounds this two was uh, not very appropriate for the answer so the suitable answer for this will be fca it's a very good question if you can you know visualize that you are very then that means you are thorough to some extent the equal terms right compare and contrast the seller's obligation of two of the equal terms selected by you about uh, that of course you can say say that if you if you uh, compare cpt and cip what happened sales responsibility are same cpt and cip the same but in cip in addition to the responsibility of cpt he has to contract of insurance he has to contract for insurance like that you have to study and see take the pair of randomly and see what are the differences that's the best way of studying the encoders right i will not ask a feedback because the early one of you did not give so that we will continue to go on unless there is a, a question or some kind of a query from you i will go on Question number two. A Sri Lankan exporter Kenny Limited wishes to export shoes to Germany, and the shipment is to be made from the port of Colombo to Hamburg. And the buyer wants the exporter to arrange and pay the sea freight. Right. Identify the trade term as per input terms, rules 2010. So you can use for 2020 also as well. Right. So Sri Lankan exporter Kemini wishes to export shoes to Germany, and the shipment is to be made from port of Colombo to Hamburg and the buyer wants the exporter to arrange and pay sea freight. Buyer wants the exporter to arrange and pay the sea freight. Right. So you can use uh, CIP, obviously, so CIF is also CFR, CIF. Because the freight is paid, no? so you can't use FOB and FCA, and if uh, not FOB and FAs, you can't use. You can use CFR and CIF. Also, you can use the arrival being source as well, right? That is DPU. Uh, then uh, DAP and DDP. Because these three codons also could be used for. C, right? For any word, in other words. But if the if the question says exclusive for C express uh, C shipment, exclusive for C shipment, we did not be stated in the question. Then you can use only C F R and C I. That's a different scenario. Otherwise, you have to use these. Right. From the answer above, state the trader which has the lowest cost to the Kelly's obligation. Right. So, Kelly's obligation, what is the lowest cost? You can just see in here. Because these two input terms, the risk passers, no sooner must be kept on both the vessel. Right. No sooner must be kept on both the vessel and the board of loading. At the board of loading, the risk passers. There, yeah. but there's a carriage cost from port to port, right? Incurred by the seller. 
So, for the, I mean, I assume the size of the consignment is same. So, this, this is, if the, if this, uh, if the value of this consignment is x, and if the value of this consignment for the same size of this, or the CIF, that will be y. And the y will be greater than x because of the contract of each one. And in case of DPU and DDP, the value increases because you have to clear for import in the last equator and you have to unload the goods and they deliver at the place. So the lowest is the CFR. Right. If the trade term used was CFR Hamburg and the goods are damaged during the loading of the goods to the vessel at the port of Colombo, state who will have to bear the risk and how they could recoup their loss. I read out again. If the trade term used was CFR Hamburg, CFR Hamburg. Right. CFR Hamburg. Right, CFR Hamburg means goods are coming to Hamburg. The right, import is in Hamburg, Germany. Right, goods are coming to Hamburg because you have to insert the name, port of destination after CFR. Right, we don't know from where the goods are coming, but in the question it says from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Right, the goods are exported from Colombo. To Hamburg, that is why you say CFR Hamburg. Right. Now remember one thing: where is CFR? Seller doesn't have any obligation to contract for insurance. So insurance, no obligation. No obligation. When I say no obligation, mean seller to buyer. That's no obligation. Right? If you refer very carefully the article 83 of CFR, you will see this. Likewise, if you refer B3 article under CFR, you will see buyer author will not have any obligation. That is, buyer or seller. No obligation. Right? So, in other words, in, in quota of CFR, neither party are obligated to cover insurance to each other. Right? That is the in quota article says. But the question is slightly uh, different uh, to the uh, things that we have learned here. Therefore, we'll read for the third time. If the trade term used for CFR Hamburg in quota 2010, and the goods are damaged during the loading of the goods to the vessel at the port of Colombo. Right? State who will have to bear the risk and how they could recoup the risk. Now, in CFR contract, now this is the vessel, this is the port of loading. You got the question, this is in Colombo. Right? When the goods being placed on board the vessel, the risk passes to buyer. Passes to buyer. When the goods being placed on board the vessel, while placing the goods on on the on the vessel, if something happens to the goods, it's on the seller's account. After placing the goods on the on the board the vessel, if something happens to the goods, if the goods be damaged, still we are in board of Colombo, but she on the buyer's account. So that is the thing you have to explain. While placing the goods on board the vessel, if something happens to the goods, it's on the seller's account. 
But after paying the goods, something happens to the goods, it's on bicycle. On bicycle. So, can you assume that uh, the goods, uh, after paying the goods, something happened during the voyage or on the eastern ship and during the voyage, something happens to the goods because of the high tidal waves or tsunami vector, whatever it is. Then, early we say neither parties are responsible. So goods are being created by the buyer, the goods are damaged. So therefore, it's very prudent for the buyer to cover the insurance by locally, not only as the seller, to cover the goods to his interest. If there are any losses are damaged during the voyage, he can claim from the insurance. So the bank should, bank should advise, despite the fact that the article says neither party are responsible to each other. When they contract with CFR, bank should advise the buyer to cover the insurance locally. Right. So you can attempt the other question also as well. Uh, now we'll move to the revolving facility assignment. Question number six of the assignment one. I wanted you all to attempt that. We'll see how it goes. Question number six in revolving facility assignment one. The question says, your valued customer Evans Limited has secured an export order for the supply for certain goods to the value of $350,000, each one to a buyer in USA on 90 days DA terms. In order to manufacture the required goods, your customer will have to import two kinds of components, M and P, from Singapore. Evans Limited has contracted with the supplier to purchase M on NC terms and P on 30 days user's terms. Users NC terms. The NC for M has to be issued six weeks before the uh, before shipment, and the NC P has to issue two weeks before the shipment. It will take a further two weeks for the goods and the documents to be received in Sri Lanka. The cost of M required for one export shipment is hundred eighty thousand, and the cost of P for each export shipment is hundred thousand. The minimum order for P is two hundred thousand. Right. So, before any really further, we'll try to draw the timeline. Right. Right. So there are two LCs, but in these LCs, in this sum. The LCs are open in two different intervals. One LC is open six weeks prior to the uh, shipment day. Another one is two weeks prior to the shipment day. So there are two kinds of raw materials, components, M and P. Right? So we'll note here the shipment day. Shipment or date of shipment. So from here, six weeks prior, Uh, and NC been open, we have to identify what the NC is. NC for M has to be issued six weeks before the shipment. So here NC 
n right a uh, so what is m now uh, m is the last sentence of the second paragraph the cost of m required for foreign export shipment is 180000 180,000. Right? And we have to figure out if this is a site JC or an user JC. Right. That is on the earlier lines of the paragraph. It says, Evers Limited has contracted with the supplier to purchase M on site JC terms. Right. So this is site. So we will move to the next one, next AC. Uh, next AC that is P has to be issued two weeks before the shipment date. Now this is a shipper and two weeks here is assumed from the idea. Right? It's two weeks. From here to here is six weeks, from here to here is two weeks. Second AC being opened, not that the time that the MB is issued, but two weeks prior to the shipment date. Right. So <clears throat> now we have to identify what is uh, what the P is. This the LCP. How much is that? Uh, cost of M required for the export shipment is 180, and the cost of P for each export shipment is 100. So you can use for 100 thousand dollars the AC, but there's a qualification given. The minimum order for P has to be 200,000. So we'll see dollars 200,000. 200,000. But they have a qualification. So I'll put a small tag in there. That will remind me there's a qualification. Right. Then, uh, right. Then we have to identify what is the terms of P. It says 30 days user's terms. 30 days user's terms. Right? So we'll say here 30 days. User's. Right. So we have the shipment date, we have the LCM and LCP over in two different intervals. Then Trading charges and custom duty will read later. Then the next important line is the time taken to manage the goods and export them will be two months from the date of uh, the components are received. So date of uh, receipt of ship, uh, date of uh, receipt of goods are on marked. So we have to check on that now. Uh, in the first paragraph, it says LC for M has to be issued six weeks before the goods and the documents to be received. And the M required for one export ship is 100,000. Uh, no, somewhere earlier than that. LCM has to be issued six weeks before the shipment, and the P has to be issued two weeks before the shipment, right? It will take further two weeks for the goods and documents to be received, right? So from the shipment date, it will take two weeks for the To receive the goods and documents. Right. Uh, now we can read that particular sentence there. The time taken to benefit the goods and export them will be two months from the date of components are received. Date of components received in here. So from there, we take two months to manufacture and export them. So here, export visa purchased. So have a glance on the first paragraph. Value of the export bill is three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the tenor of the export bill is ninety days. D A. So when you say tenor of the ninety, uh, tenor of the export bill is ninety days. That means after purchasing the bill. It will take for the three months, nine days with three months, to receive the realized export proceeds of the export bill. So I will say, yes. 
Right? To finish the timeline, we will plot the months off as well. Now here we have mindset that is four weeks equal to one month. Right? One month is is thirty days. One month is thirty days. Right. Now I'll plot this as first gen. First gen. Now six weeks is difficult to plot it. It's not divisible by four. But here to here is six weeks. Here to here is two weeks. Therefore, from here to here is four weeks. So this point is first February. First February, right? In other words, this is four weeks. So the PLC is open one month after the MB is open. In other words. If this, this LC is open in January, first, this LC will be open in 1st February. So that's the useful information that we got it from there. Right. Then, from here is six weeks. Up to this is two weeks. That means the all in all, up to the point the goods to be received from the rate of opening the LC is eight weeks. That means two months. So January, this will be March. March. From March two months means first May. Three months from first May means first August. Now we have completed the timeline. Right. So as a final question, I will ask. Now I think there are one more student have logged in. There are seven. Students only today, and uh, well, let me know if I can see the Lakshi, Shanukya, and Tanya. So uh, let me uh, have a feedback from you whether you understood the timeline. I'll give just a couple of seconds. Right, you are silent. I'll go ahead then. Now we need to check the facilities. LC of Stanley. For LCM, that is for site. For site. Right? First January, you open LC for 180. First February, you open LC for 180. And first March, you open 180. April, May, June, you keep on opening 180 value of 180 LCs. And the documents are coming in March. When the documents come in March, what happens? The LC I was telling get depleted. The reason why is indirect liability get converted to direct liability. So to show the depletion, I will credit the LC I was telling in first March for 180. Right? So when I credit the LC I was telling, obviously that the bill I was telling comes in. For the bill I was telling, we don't give a credit facility because it's demanded, it's at site. So no sooner the bill is there, customer has to collect the bill out of his own funds or the bank will finance. So therefore, I will straight away from here open a short term input loan account. Short term input loan account, I said one here because there are not, that's another LC. So the short term input loan account will get EMR on first March. For how much? Unlikely. That's how the coverage goes out. Right? 
and until when the, we have to keep on granting import loans a lady that has to be visualized you have to grant, keep on granting import loan the way that we receive the documents so the documents are received from first march itself for the component end so whenever the documents are received we have to keep on granting so that gives a little bit of sound as if that we are have we have to grant indefinitely so export these are purchased proceeds will come in may first may so when you purchased a bill the proceeds of the purchase export bill will give to the customer but in the before that we have granted loans so therefore we'll recover the loans whatever the finances that we have done and give the residual value to the customer so the first may export bill purchase proceeds will come don't worry too much what they won't be we just say first may here and the export bill purchase bill purchase proceeds so until may we have to keep on granting try to give another one loan that is april 480 after april that is from may onwards i need not give because it was proceeds will pour into come so 180 to four times has to be given 180 to four times has to be given and at the rate of 100, 100 is the lower rate given in the sum. So that means 72 million here. Right. Export bill purchase the fabric. We start to purchase export bills from May. That is on first May. How much? For three hundred fifty dollars. And it gets realizes only in first August. So we see EXP. So from 1st May to 1st August, counting from May, you have to see how much of export shippers that we are going to purchase. So 1st May, June, July. That is 350,000 into 3 At the rate of 100. And then five in okay. Right? Then the user's facility, that means to for the raw material P. So NC facility users, that is 30 days users, refer to the raw material P. Now the first LC being open in first February, not in January, that I explained is for 200. But there's a qualification there. Because minimum requirement for the X1 X consignment of export is 100,000 worth of P component. But minimum mod has to be placed for 200. So therefore, this LC has to be open every other month. So first February, there will be 200. Then 
first april there will be the second lc then first may there won't be an lc first june there will be an lc for 200000 be opened by the bank but well the cost so documents are coming either way in march first march documents are coming for 200000 right so you can see now the first february is 200 end of february end of february that will be first march so that time that will go off then april will be there so the april uh, what do you call the uh, for the lc open in april documents will come in first may First May. Right? First May. So this LC will be outstanding only for one month, not for two months. So therefore, LC factory for this will be 200,000 into one at the rate of 100 is 20 million. Okay. Since the LC is an user's LC, you have to have an acceptance facility. Acceptance facility. Acceptance means the import bill outstanding account. Users bill import bill. Why you have to have an import bill outstanding account? Unlike in the side bill, because when the documents come, it's not being demanded. It's meant for acceptance only. Customer accepts the bill of the exchange and retain with the bank the accept the bill of exchange and take the rest of the documents and pay the cargo and enjoys. So he's supposed to come to the bank at the date of maturity of the bill of exchange only for payment. If it doesn't come, then the bank is exposed. So therefore, bank has to grant a facility for that, taking additional collateral. So when the bill is booked, at the time the documents are received and the NC objects are depleted. In first March, the first document will be taken here, a 200, and the second document will be in first May. Like that, one after the other documents will cause a call. Now you have to calculate the maturity date. Maturity date given at 30 days users. 30 days users. So when you say 30 days users, that is from the date of receipt of documents, you have to count 30 days. So here, the point where the NCB is open, and this is the shipment, and this is the time the documents are coming. So from there, 30 days means 1st April. So we we'll say 1st April. One. Now you will see, for one month, it's outstanding. So therefore, the what you call the facility for this purpose will be, except the facility will be 200,000 into one at the rate of 100. Okay, 20 million. Now you all know how to write the base of calculation. So I skip the base of calculation because of that. Right. These are the only facilities. The only thing what we skipped is the skip towards the clearing charges. So we'll see how the clearing charges and the uh, duty goes in there. So we read out that particular area. The clearing charges and custom duty for each shipment of M is 10,000 and P is 5,000, right? Training charges and customers for each shipment of M is 10,000, P is 5,000. And we have to be paid on arrival of the goods. The weight expenses and wages, at, et cetera, which will amount to five to $50,000 per month. And the funds will have to be made available to them 
at the beginning of month starting from the date of arrival of the import ship right so clearly charge the cost of duty for each ship and mv 10000 and is 10000 and p is 5000 right and means a side component which comes every month p is the users component it comes every other month so The customs duty has to be paid by the bank because customs will have money only at the time of purchase the export bill. So until such time, he will not have money. So he expects the banks to fund it. The bank can consider of giving a short term loan, not a short term import loan, short term loan to reset deficit. <coughs> For that, we have to count the number of shipments. For component M, starting from March, starting from March. Including March also, that is March, April, that is two months. There are two shippers, two shippers. Because May, purchases are coming, export purchases are coming. So bank will not give custom duty checks for him. And the P component, P component, will have one shipper because if M has two shippers, he will have only one shipper because it's all eight months. So one shipper. Right, so that therefore this is twenty thousand, and this is five thousand. So all in all, it will be thirty thousand at the rate of hundred. So bank will consider of giving a short term loan for three million as custom duty and clearing charges. Right. Second month, the oil expenses, wages, etc., which is amount to fifteen thousand. So, in respect to the fact whether it's a side tenancy or a side component, P component or M component, the monthly charge of charge of fifteen thousand as oil expenses. So, how many months do you find? March, April, two months, right? So, there will be the clearance taking place in March and April. So. <clears throat> There will be two months into fifteen thousand at the rate of hundred. That will be again three million. Uh, earlier, I think I did a small calculating error there. In the early shipment, uh, M. Uh, For ten thousand, there are two shipments, so that will be twenty thousand. Then P charge is five thousand. There is only one shipment there is five thousand. So I cast up this as a draw is twenty five thousand, not thirty thousand. So total custom duty is US dollar twenty five thousand. So LKA short term loan amount will be twenty five thousand at the rate of hundred. Please do correct that. So therefore, it's LKR two point five million, not three million. I added this as thirty thousand. That 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 was an error. It's two point five million. Right.
Right, we'll take a, a scenario is uh, not in the assignment. Uh, try the 2018 paper question, something like this. I don't have the question now. You all should have it. Uh, I will not give the exact uh, amounts, but I will give the concept and the other variance to the sum that we did. So we'll do that variance and see whether you can catch that. Right. Say, I'll draw the timeline first and uh, try to give the storyline that will be easy for me and you. We'll say, there are the user sense C. User says, see, when there, whenever there's a user says, see, the question should come to your mind is, what is the tenor period, tenor, right? What is the different pay, payment period? So the other user says, see, will give a value $10,000. And the tenor will say, uh, Sixty days from date of shipment. Six days from the date of shipment. And we will assume this particular LC been opened by the company, by the customer, two weeks before the shipment date. Two weeks before the shipment date. And we'll assume that the, it will take for the two weeks to receive the good send of weeks. I'll appreciate if you can, you know, take the timeline and the illustrations there simultaneously. And then again, if particular LC being opened by the customer, two weeks by the shipment date. Value of the AC is ten thousand dollars. It's a news on CLC, and the tenor is six days from date of shipment. So the AC is open to two weeks prior to shipment day, and we will take for the two weeks to receive dockside goods. We will assume this the time taken to manufacture and export them, export the goods. Takes place three months from the date of the delivery of the documents or goods. So we'll say ADXBP on this date, take it three months from that point. So we can give a value of the export $200,000. Right to be realistic, I will say $100,000 here. And the trainer will give for the export bill 90 days. The Meaning, from this point, it will take for the three months to realize the export proceeds. So while drawing the timeline, drawing the timeline, I gave the storyline out as well. Right? To give a, uh, a summary of that, customer opens a letter of credit. Two weeks part of shipment day, it takes for two weeks to receive docks and goods. Time taken to manufacture the goods and export them will be three months. And the tenor of the export bill is DA, uh, time rate DA, and it takes three months, in other words, to get the export, uh, export realized, export bill realized from the huge bank. And the details of the LCB no police, that's for $100,000. And it's a user CLC. And the tenor of the user CLC is 60 days from the date of shipment. Shipment. Now, this is the variance. Now, we'll take the area of standing, the T amount. These are all in the worksheet, right? LC of standing uh, for, for the user CLC, right? User CLC. Now, we, before that, we'll try to put the, uh, it's not a must that you need to put, but it's easy to calculate. We'll put the months there. 
keep in mind four weeks equal to one month and one month has 10 days only right so here we will see first gen first gen chip on daily two weeks after first gen that will be 15 gen 15 gen so two weeks from 15 gen is end of the month beginning of the next month so first of February. Three months from 1st of February will be 1st of May. March, April, May. First three months from 1st May will be June, July, August. Right? Now this is the catch. First gen, ship one day doesn't happen after four weeks. After two weeks from the date of uh, issue only the 15 days comes. Right? So that will be two weeks. So we have to say 15 Jan date. So 15 Jan means is uh, then the two weeks from 15 Jan will be end of January. End of January means being of February. So we'll say first February. Right? First February. So, now we will uh, try to plot it now. So, first gen, we have the LC for 100,000. Then, first February, we will have a LC for 100,000. First March, we will have a LC for 100,000. Like that, it goes on. When will the documents coming? In February, first February. February doubles it from 100,000, right? So there will be only one now standing left by the time the documents come because this goes off with this, and this goes off with this, and this goes off with this. For any given time, there's a $100,000 AC only, $100,000 shipment only, outstanding only. So you can say 100,000 into 1. At the rate of if the rate is 100,000, 100, 100, you can say 10 million here, 10 here. Right, that is all right. That is all the way I was trying to talk about now. The way this is in the acceptance. It's in the acceptance. We'll see how it goes off. And for that, you have to have a different base of calculation. That was I will give you. Right. You know if there's a user sensi. Opening up acceptance account is a must. If it's a site LC, you don't open an acceptance account. In other words, if it's a nuisance LC, you have to give a nuisance facility and acceptance facility. So for that, we have to have the acceptance account. Acceptance is a big word. Acceptance means users import bill outstanding. Right. So when the bill is getting uh, booked, we first February. For 100. Next one will be 1st March. 100. Right, then it goes on. LC will open one in the 1st January. After one month, then the bills are coming to come in. Right. When the bill, uh, the, the first bill of 1st uh, February, when it gets matured, is 60 days from the date of ship. Six days for the date of shipment. Now, the ship, date of shipment is 15 January. Not from the date of receipt, they are talking of from the date of shipment, the maturity date is. You have to be careful, you have to read carefully what the tenor is. So, fifth, six days from 15 January means that is two months from 15 January will be 15 March. 15 March. 15 March. Now you see, this bill is outstanding for one and a half months. One and a half months. But you remember uh, what you call the assumption? Four weeks equal to one month. That means we are giving facilities counting for months. So one and a half months, when you are giving, we have to, one and a half months means what? One month and two weeks. One month and two weeks. So we have to round up. Round up. 
two two months and then think of the fatherhood. So take down the except of fatherhood. This is all right for you all. Take down the except of fatherhood. Then I will illustrate how to write the this kind of a various if you get it. It was evidenced in the 2018 paper and the 19 papers as well. Uh, coming fractions as G, uh, 10 period. That is for the bill, uh, booking date, up to the actual date, you don't get the complete number of months. So, this is how we are to do it. So, take down the acceptance and say, since uh, it is a nuisance LC, Bank has to grant a grant an acceptance facility. Bank has to grant an acceptance facility. Users bill will be received, user's bill will be received, user's bill will be received, will be received, one month after the date of, one month after the date of opening the AC. One month after it of opening the AC. Shipment is affected. Shipment is affected. Two weeks after the date of LC. Two weeks after the date of LC. Two weeks after the date of LC. Tenor of the user's bill is tenor of the user's bill is sixty days from the date of shipment. Sixty days from the date of shipment. Sixty days from the date of shipment. Therefore, users bill will be outstanding. Therefore, the users bill will be outstanding for one and a half months. For one and a half months. For one and a half months. From one and a half months. Rounded up to two months. Rounded up to two months. To two months. Therefore, the acceptance facility will be help here. Help here. Hundred thousand into two. At the rate of 100, if the rate is 100, huh? it will be 20 million. Right? So, same thing will apply for the import loan also as well. If you visualize. So, we'll open the single account also here. For the purpose of retiring the user's import bill, this loan account will get earmarked at the time the acceptor's account for the first bill get matures. So that will be 15 March. But the amount is 100. So this is how the double entry goes. And the second one will be 15 April. Next after next will be 15 May. So 
when the proceeds are coming for the timeline is first made. EFBB. So for 15 March to first May, bank has to plant loans until first May. So this first March, the loan will be outstanding, in other words, for one and a half months. 15 March to 15 April, one month. 15 April to end of uh, April, it will be two weeks. End of April and it's, uh, it's equal to the end of the following month. So therefore, the gap between 15 March to 1st May will be one and a half months, rounded up to two months. So same logic you apply for the loan also as well, round up to two months, and then give the facility by multiplying by two. Right? So we can say, uh, uh, short-term import loan caption, short-term import loan, short term import loan for the purpose of retiring for the purpose of retiring retiring means settling for the purpose of retiring users import bill users import bill User's bill is outstanding. User's bill is outstanding for one and a half months. For one and a half months from the date of booking until the date of maturity. Until the date of maturity. Right. However, time taken to receive export proceeds is three months from the date of delivery. From the date of delivery of raw material. Therefore, bank will have to grant short-term import loan for one and a half months. For one and a half months. For one and a half months. Round it up to two months. Right, so that should be hundred thousand into two hundred twenty million. Now here, these are the documents were received. When the documents were received, maturity date has to be calculated the way the teller is. So usually the maturity date is calculated from the date of receipt of documents. But in this particular instance that I gave as an example, is calculated even though it's received from February. You have to see the shipment date and calculate it six days from the shipment date because the tenor has given as shipment date. Tenor has six days from the date of shipment. So you receive the document in first February, all right. But you have to calculate the message date from 15 January. That two weeks you have to go behind and then calculate. Then what happens? Six days from 15 January will end up in here somewhere. 15th of March. So from 1st February to 15th of March is one and a half months. Another one and a half months to go. Otherwise, he won't be able to export, uh, manufacture export. So for that uh, what the gap, we had to bridge it. How? By financing, uh, by giving an import finance. That's why I said we had to give for one and a half months, round up to two months, 100,000 into two at the rate of 120 billion.
Right, we we'll leave the class uh, for today. And uh, so you have to, uh, I have given three uh, assignments on uh, revolving facilities. Do as far as possible. And uh, all sums are workable. And uh, there are tough sums all right, but you should be able to pull through. Do the past papers also, means the 2018 and 2019, based on the thing that I said with the last concept. Do that also, not, not very difficult. And uh, get yourself uh, what you call uh, very handy and useful uh, to write the base of calculation as well. When you're doing the sums, don't try to get the answer only. Write the base of calculation also so that you will speed up and you will manage the time and see how much of time being consumed to do a sum like that. Right, I'll uh, try to see you on next Sunday. Thank you.